Hi, I'm Wendy, and in 1992, I moved to Los Angeles to make my mark in this town. It's 20 years later, and like thousands of other hopefuls, nothing has stuck, no doors have opened, and no one knows who I am. The only thing I got going for me is that I've been close more times than I'd like to count. I've been a finalist in some prestigious screenplay competitions, I've been an award-winning short filmmaker in some second-tier film festivals, and I've won several unknown comedy competitions. Problem is, almost and close only count in bowling and biopsies. But the great thing is, I know I'm not alone. So I've traveled around the country to interview many of my friends who've also struggled to get the brass ring and have them tell their stories of being almost. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation, and I almost made it into the last comic standing house twice. I'm Greg R.C., and I almost became a professional magician professional writer, professional actor, a professional mentalist. Hi, I'm Jordan Summers. I was in a band called The Imposters, and I almost was in the biggest band in the world. I'm Christine Blackburn, and I almost got kicked out of town. And now we're going to talk to Christine Blackburn. Cheers. Hi, Christine. Hi, Wendy. This is, today is brought to you by uh, Albertson's Seltzer Water. Water in a can. Yeah, yeah. It's the best water in a can you're going to get. When did you come to LA? I got to Los Angeles in August of 1997. Oh, and what were you doing before that? Well, I had just gotten out of, um, it's complicated. I was in the Peace Corps. Oh. And then while I was in the Peace mm -hmm. Corps, I got sick. So I had to leave the Peace Corps. Okay. And so when I got to LA, I was about about eight weeks out of chemotherapy. I had gone through chemo for like five months. So did when they, I got to LA, I was still bald. Did they discover it in the Peace Corps? Yes. That's what got you that's out exactly of it? Right. Uh -huh. Well, it didn't get me out. I didn't want to leave. Right. And when it wasn't one, I, was, I wasn't trying to get discharged. <laughs> I got sick. So where was your epiphany that you wanted to move to LA and be a Well, see, I've always wanted to be in Los Angeles and be an actress. You know, uh -huh. I wanted a sitcom and I wanted uh -huh. to be an actress. So um, that's always been my whole life. I've wanted that. was so afraid of coming to Los Angeles. Even though I'd been a flight attendant and I'd flown all over the place, right. I was so afraid of like making a go of it to being an actress yeah. that I was more, I was more, and I did, I was more likely to go to the Peace Corps. And I did. I went to the Peace Corps. I went to a third world country. Yeah. Because to me it was less frightening than LA. Oh man. And rightly so. So it was like I just had this big moment of clarity, life changing thing. Right. I almost died. I right. easily could have died. I didn't die. What right. do you really want to do? I want to be an actress. Okay. So then I just came to LA. No hair. It shouldn't take a, a major health scare to make that happen. But sometimes it does. I, I know. know. It shouldn't take, it shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> so in 1999, I started going out on commercial auditions because oh. my hair was back enough. So it took like two years after I got to LA that I could get headshots right. and start going out. So yeah. I was going out a lot for casual mom. Uh -huh. I was always casual mom, pretty but average. So it's better to know what's in your wheelhouse. Yeah, exactly. I hate that <laughs> A new expression, the wheelhouse, right? So now it's the spring of 2000. Oh, so you've rolled, you've done all this kind of non-union stuff. No, I haven't done hardly anything. I've only oh. done about four or five gigs total, oh, okay. non-union. She was sending me out for union and non-union. because and I was commercials, like one day or a couple days. Of yeah, that, uh, uh, direct responses, stuff like right. that. But I had only booked maybe three or four or five things. Not a lot. Yeah. And non-union stuff. But I went out on union stuff. I mean, because you don't, mm -hmm. it's not like you only go out for one or the other. Everybody goes out yeah. for all the same. And I started going out more and more, and then I started getting callbacks, and then I started booking jobs. And it was like June of 2000. Yeah, that's great. Now, un but unbeknownst to me, the Screen Actors Guild had gone on strike the month before. Oh. And I did not know this. Well, you weren't Why would I know this? I don't have their newsletters. Right. I don't get whatever. Right. So then I'm booking gigs, and I'm like, that's, that's great, man. I'm on a little roll here, and I think I did like Betty Crocker. The rooms were all still filled. Oh, See, okay. the casting rooms are all still filled. It's this, yeah. At this juncture, nobody's picketing. Yeah. Nobody's talking about a strike. The rooms are still filled. Yeah. I'm getting calls from my agent. That's She's not saying a word to me. Right. Like, right. it wasn't even talked about. And then, one time, I went to Sheila Manning's office. And she was on it, San Vicente. A casting director. Casting director. Casting casting director. director. Okay. Commercial casting director. Okay. And on, there was something written, like, in spray paint on her door. Something like... You know, Buster. something about strike or stra scab or bus, yeah. 
uh, something about SAG and strike and whatever. And I remember thinking like, well, shit, man, somebody's pissed off. <laughs> and then that was the day I found out. But now I've already done like three or four spots, maybe even five. And that was the day I got this call back from Mervyn's and I got like an 11 series campaign. That was what put me more in the right. spotlight yes. in California. So now it's July of 2000. Yeah, because And this is when really they start picketing. They didn't start picketing yeah. until July of 2000. So May and June, they're on strike and right. nobody knows. Now they're picketing and now the picketers right. are angry. And they're walking around outside in front of the auditioning offices. Right. And now, as it were, I knew... They didn't want me to be there. Like, right. I knew at this point. It wasn't right. like I didn't know. I wasn't, like, uh, had any vouchers or yeah, I wasn't, yeah, yeah. like, must join. Right. So I thought to myself, wait a minute. I've always gone out for commercials, as they have. I've right. always sat next to, we're at the Nabisco audition. You're SAG. I'm not, but whatever. We're all going out for the same job because it's right. not like non-union people don't go out for union work. Okay, so those guys go on strike. But I didn't go on strike. I wasn't even in their club. Yeah. So why would I stop working? Right. Well, but then... They got, they sort of like targeted me. They, I got like a lot of like, they were really mad at me. And I started getting phone calls. The internet was just kind of like, people were just emailing around. But I started getting really hateful emails. And then there was an article in the, a Hollywood Reporter. I know, or, or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I, they, they were trying to run me out of town, as it were. So you're not part of this club. Right. And yet they're mad at you for doing something that is against what they believe, even though you're not part of it. Well, there's a lot of people who are SAG that were on strike that were working. I yeah. mean, there were stars that were working right. while they were in the union. It's not like they didn't know, right. but they would all... I, I, can't, I wish I would have thought about some of those people that were involved at this time. Like, I don't know if it was Richard Dreyfus. I think he had about a bunch of Honda ads running or something. Right. And it was like, well, he shouldn't have been doing those Honda ads. Yeah. But wait a minute. You know, how? what's he going to say? Right. But you're sad. But I'm not. But So there was this big thing about why are you, on my case, when I'm not even in your group, why aren't you mad at the people who are right in your club who are breaking your rule? Do you feel like maybe you're an easy target? I might have been an easy target. I was booking a lot, and so I was that, you know, I, I had the face of the one doing the spots because you were seeing right. me on the, show, right. on the TV now, you know, frequently. Right. But then a funny thing happened. So July, now it's August. Mm -hmm. In August... I book a job, and it was with six other actors, and it was SAG, and it was not SAG commercial, so it was a SAG theatrical, and they weren't on strike, it was just SAG commercial on strike, and they booked me for this, which made me a must-join. I turned down, because now I'm a must-join, so in my head, I'm thinking, wait a minute, now I do have to right. be in this union, I'm going to be in this union, so I turned down like six jobs, and my agent was furious at me that I turned all these jobs down, but I said, no, because now I am going to be in this union, and so I turned all this work, and like, nobody ever gave me... And not that I'm asking for credit for that, but you know what? I shouldn't have turned down that work. Well, no. Yeah. But I, I turned it all down because I felt like now I'm a must join. Now I hear what they're saying. They're saying, you are going to be in these unions. Let me go to this, like, a meeting. I should never have gone. I don't even know why I went. It was so embarrassingly horrible. It was, they were called the Membership Review Committee. They were okay. the people who had me sitting there. Uh-huh. They just formed it for the strike. It was a new committee. Uh, is it a new committee? No, 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 no. It was just for that time period. <laughs> they sat around this table and they yelled at me. Somebody, when they were picketing, somebody got hit by a car on um, yeah, on Beverly yeah, yeah, yeah. in front of the casting lounge or something. Right. Somebody got hit by a car and died. And they're around this table and they're telling me it's my fault that he died because he was picketing because I'm working or something. I don't know. It was very, I was yeah. like, whoa, wow, you can't put that on me. So it was really intimidating. It was very intim intimidating, and then they, um, Dave McNary wrote in the Hollywood, in the Variety, he wrote that right. I called myself, <laughs> he said, and she calls herself Bookham Blackburn. It's like, oh God, Dave, please, I never said that. So then I, I called Variety, they had to retract that, right. but that's on the eighth page, you right. know, the next one. And then I was at this gig, the one where I, it was a SAG job, that right. direct TV, the industrial that I was working, and a woman named Cynthia Sizegetti, who was still out there, and a very prominent you know, or somebody in Hollywood yeah. who teaches improv and she's very talented. Right. She came marching on set and like bawled me out and I was getting threats. I was getting, people were saying that they knew I have a cat. They knew where I live. It was very, very scary. I had the police come over like three times on Cynthia Sides yeah, yeah. and a few other people. I had restraining orders put against them because they were, it was the coming there, down. It's like they were stalking you. On me. Yeah, it right. was me. It was, I was the reason for all of it.
It was really scary. Union, they sanctioned me for five years. They wouldn't let me be in the union for five years. But don't, yeah, well, but, but you understand, I've still been working commercials. I never stopped working. Right. And I've had SAG insurance yeah. all this time because it's a right to work state. And even though right. they wouldn't let me in their union, I could still get their benefits. It was so crazy. They just needed somebody to be angry at, and they were angry at me. But this is an important time, though, to talk about unions because it is important. Yeah. And SAG and after are about Completely. to be heard, which is really right. good, a good thing, and a right. for a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know why SAG ever thought they were so exclusive to not want the after people who are just as talented. So, I mean, yeah. I think it's good. I think it's a really good right. thing. Well, what was hard was I lost a lot of friends. I guess they weren't my friends, right? But they're probably no. like 10, 10, I could probably name 8 or 10 people that are still not my friends. And it all stemmed for that. Like, they got so angry with me. I had a, one guy take me out to lunch and he says, if you don't stop, you know, if you don't stop going out for commercials right now, our friendship is over, you know, and it's kind of like, wait a minute, you're threatening me, almost like, if I can't have any friends that are Republican, but they, you know, they really thought I was going to leave, a lot of people thought I was leaving town, that yeah. I was done, I was blacklisted is what I was, right. that's the word, I was blacklisted. Honestly, I don't know how you survived it, and I'm... Well, because I had cancer, right? I had cancer, so, so that's why it, it didn't seemed like it was a lot... Right. Yeah. I mean, because once you have cancer and you almost die, yeah. it was like, I had, hair, I had hair that day. I, I, I now I believe it because I almost did too. So yeah, so like, there's like yeah. a whole thing when you do cancer. I mean, yeah. I know it's like a bunch, you know, if you've never had it, it seems like, get out of here. But yeah. it's true. You, you get that and then it's other like... Other things are not, not the end of the world. Right. And yeah. right. So you can call me names and I can be a scab and you can be mean to me and you can leave threatening letters right. on my email and on my answering machine. And it is upsetting. No yeah. Notes to my door, notes under my car window. Yeah. I mean, it was upsetting, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I wasn't sick that day. And yeah. I wasn't going through chemo. And I also felt very strong about my position that I had nothing to do with it. Right. And then once I did have something to do with it, I stopped working. Right. Well, my, my husband, you know, mm -hmm. my ex-husband, he's my ex-husband. But at that time, he was so good to me, you know, and just always reinforced me. You know, you're stronger than this. They, they, they're just picking you out. You know, you're a scapegoat. They're just, they're just, you know. And I also would talk to my family back east. Because people, you know, because to me it was, everything was going on right there and then. It was right. like my world. But my agent's calling and I'm working on one hand. I'm going to right. wardrobe and I'm living the life I want. And I'm thinking right. this is a break, but it's not a break. But I'm getting threats, but I'm not. But So it was a really, it was a confusing time. It was about six months that it was really hard. Oh, but even now I could go places and people would be mad yeah. at me. Yeah. I could go right now to an audition and somebody might look at me and be like, What? <laughs> Anyway, but I continue to work, um, you know, I have a podcast now, and that's yeah. really my, my focus. For me, I love doing my podcast, Story Worthy. I've been doing it for two years, uh, almost two years, two years in July, and it's because I can, because yeah. all it takes to do a podcast is, you know, yeah, I pay a sound guy, but then it's just me working on the computer, getting guests, bringing them in here, right. they bring the story, we talk about it. In other words, if I say I right. want to be a talk show host, then I need to just do that if right. I can. And I can, so I do. Right. In other words, all this stuff is very consumer friendly now to make right. your own little shows as we're right. doing or do your own little thing. So if you can, then do it. Quit right. saying you want to do it and then do so that. Yeah, you want exactly. a podcast, then have a podcast. Yeah, you want exactly. a show, then get a show. Uh, it's all right, though. It's all right. I think that whole cancer thing has made me stronger because it's just nothing really matters. If you're alive, really nothing else really matters. I know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really hard. If you don't like me, fair enough. Right. The next guy will. If you don't like me, fair enough. The next guy will. If you don't like me, fair enough. The next guy will. I will sleep with somebody. I have a child. It's a good thing. It's, it's yeah. a whole other world, which is another reason why you get this, I get even a right. harder of an attitude, like, now you think you can break right. me? You can't break me. I got somebody responsible. I'm a responsible, I, yeah. I got a kid. Yeah. I'm going to think you're the kid. You're going to call me a name? Yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Well, thank you so much thank for you, talking Wendy. to me. It's, it's, a, it's a big topic for me because it has weighed on me for yeah. a long time. It's a, it was, I took it very personally. It was a very hard thing. Uh, how could you not? But I'm excited to see this merger right yeah. now. That, that makes me very happy. Good. Thank you, Wendy. Christine Blackbird for almost. I hope you enjoyed our show. Come back next week to hear more stories of people almost making their dreams come true. And when I started to caress your breasts were styrofoam, but I guess that's okay. Hey, c'est la vie.